Welcome to a China Professional Scouts Build Order Guide. This opening will focus on getting professional scouts in quickly for a safe source of food. In this particular variation of the build though, it is going to be focused on dealing with early age 2 pressure. But you can still use this opening con to contest other sieves going professional scouts and try and deal with them stealing your deers. This guide will have two parts. In this video, I'll cover the opening build order and some options for what to do in age 2 and age, early age 3. Based on some feedback I got in my Discord, people wanted to see some insights into my thought process and how to adapt within any given game. So I decided to upload a second part, which will be uploaded at the same time as this video, so you can go check that out after this. Uh, and that video will be taking a look at two recently played games in the $20,000 Steel Series tournament. Both matches were English versus China. First being Hera versus 3DB, with Hera winning as the English, and the other game was Beastie Cutie versus Marine Lord, with Beastie winning with China. So I wanted to take a look at how the respective players approach the game and what I think the reasons were behind the, the China players winning and losing respectively. If you are interested in getting a written version of the guide, I'll have that in my Discord, which I'll leave a link in the description to. Now let's get into it. Okay, so first thing we want to do is build a mill straight away as soon as we get into game. So select all our bills, build a mill, do an Imperial official straight away, and then get our scout to bring our sheep to our mill because we are going to be collecting our sheep here and our imperial official is going to be supervising the mill the imperial official will um, basically grant a bonus for our bills um, this is actually dropping off an extra 20 percent of resources so if a villager ha is carrying 10 food and drops it off at the mill um, that is going to count for 12 food rather than uh, 10. So with our scout here, we're prioritizing getting more sheep. Our next new bill is going to be going to food. As you can see, we're supervising the mill right here. And then after that, we're going to send new bills to wood. But before they start chopping wood, they're going to build a house and then a lumber camp. Now, still getting sheep um, at this stage. The Ville is building a house, Lumber. Uh, with the Chinese, we won't get pop because they build buildings faster than other, other civilizations, so no need to worry about that. As long as you're on the ball and building the house straight away, you won't actually get pop capped here. All new Vills are continuously going to be coming onto wood here. We're going to bring our sheep back because we are getting a little bit low on food. So we're going to bring it back to our mill here. And then we're going to go continuing scouting around for new sheep to build. Build? New sheep to, to gather. Um, right here, we can see that we act our mill was actually over 20 gold here. So once you see a building here in the early stages hit 20 gold, you want to collect that tax so what you want to do is you want to click on the building um that'll collect the the gold bring it back to the tc and then you want to shift click back to supervise shift click was playing up a little bit there but once we have four on wood as well we want to build a new uh a new tax collector imperial official that's the one and he's going to be supervising the wood line. And at this stage, what we want to be doing is we want to be going manually collecting tax from our buildings. And the way we want to do it is we don't want to let one Imperial officer here just walk around and do it. Because that is a lot less efficient than if we're manually doing it. Um, so we're going to drop it off to the TC and then we're going to bring it back to the building they're currently supervising. So they don't have that extra walking time. Now, one thing you want to be considering at this stage is where you want to be dropping your Barbican of the Sun. In this particular variation of the strat, uh, we are, this is, this is basically focused on dealing with early feudal pressure. So, in, in this case, we're going to be going up with the Barbican of the Sun. If you're going for a, a greedier option, you would go with the other option there. 
So now we want to make sure we calculate to collect exactly 200 gold as we have the food available to age up. We want to send three vills to the Barbican, Barbican of the Sun and five vills to gold here. Now with this variation, we're actually going for professional scouts. So we need to have the gold income for when we age up. So at this stage as well, another thing you want to consider is you want to send your scout to the opposite side of the map. You want to see what your opponent's doing. That's going to dictate what military buildings we're going to be making in the next age. Um, and as you can see, I'm continuing to collect tax here just to kind of uh, improve the speed at which we're getting professional scouts. Now, when you start aging, I, I was a little bit slow here. You want to take your supervisor off um, off the wood lumber camp, sorry, um, and bring it onto the mining camp. As there is more villagers on the mining camp, so you're going to get more value out of the extra 20% drop off. So we're aging up around five minutes, which is fine. They shouldn't have any units in our base at this point. And they're going to have to deal with the Barbican of the Sun. Now we put the Barbican of the Sun in between the gold and food. To be honest, it could be a little bit closer to the food maybe to keep that safe. Um, and then as soon as we age, we're dropping a stable right away. And what we're going to be doing from the stable is building scouts out of there. So we've dropped off the gold that we need. We're taking in professional scouts right now. And then we're going to leave two on gold and take them off and put the, the other ones on wood here. Cue some scouts and we're going to supervise that stable so we can get scouts out a bit quicker here. Send those two hunts right away. Now, depending on what your opponent's doing, you can decide how many scouts you're making. If you're competing with professional scouts, you can make more. If they have early aggression, you could just make three scouts and then instantly start making horsemen. But at this stage, you should have scouted what buildings they have down. And in this particular case, we're just theorizing that the, we've noticed the enemy is going pikes and archers here. So we're actually going to make horsemen archers. If we were to scout just pure archer, we would consider going double stable or just supervise one stable and just mass a bunch of horsemen that way. So macro should be dependent on what units you are prioritizing making. If you were going more heavy on the horsemen, you could have less on wood than what we do. But we are making um, a mixture of archers and horsemen here. So we have roughly 50-50 on wood and food. Could even have maybe an extra one or two on wood at this stage. Um, so we can get a blacksmith down because, because we are dealing with early pressure. We, we actually have tax gold and we've been collecting a little bit gold as well. So we can have the tech advantage in the early game because we're actually able to supervise blacksmiths, which allows us to get those upgrades quicker. So I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second here. We're bringing back deers with our professional scouts, continuing to mass. Obviously, this is AI. So if you're versing an opponent, you'd probably be fighting a bit here. You could also consider walling if there's um, a lot of pressure. So we're already starting to upgrade from our blacksmith here. This is a little bit of a mistake by me here. Um, I actually was meant to be supervising the blacksmith so we could get the upgrades quicker. But it also depends if you need units out quicker or if you need the upgrades. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dictate what you currently supervise with that, with that imperial, imperial official. There we go. So at this stage, you just need to continue massing whatever is more likely to be a counter to your opponent. So now, this time around, we're actually going to be supervising. Oh man, sometimes this Imperial official is just like a pain. So we're still bringing in deers back, collecting more. Oh, I've actually left some deers on my uh, scouts here. And we're just continuing to mess. Now, one of the big things when it comes to China is you basically want the game to go late, 
right? In most cases, unless you've completely stomped the fight against your opponent and you could uh, consider ramming him if he's going a more greedier approach, but in most cases, you want to be going late game because that is where China shines. At least Castle, um, it's going to be a bit trickier to end it in age two, but um, nonetheless, wait. So our our goal now is to fight the opponent and clean them up with the tech advantage and also the faster production time, and then we want to consider going up to the next stage so we can get like incredible um, artillery from our clock tower. So, like, if this was um, against, say, like, the English or something, you'd probably be having back and forward fights trying to clean up his longbow with your horsemen. You don't want to let them mess up um, their longbows. Uh, that can be, like, really tricky to deal with. So here comes the big attack from the opponent. Age one, men at arms. Um, so... Let's just take this situation to think of it as an actual game. We we take a favorable fight. Obviously, it wouldn't be this favorable because we're not versing easy AI on the ladder. But we've taken a good engagement. And now we want to age up. So as soon as that fight's over, we want to swap a lot of our woodvilles off of wood and onto food and gold. So in this case, we've got an Imperial officer collecting tax gold. And then we've got eight bills on gold as well. and approximately 18 on food if you'd like you can 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 continue uh producing archers at this stage because obviously they're not intensive on food so if you want to keep your mass up you can kind of continue to make those but also we're not obviously going to kind of dig into your age up time quite a lot because they're expensive on the food side of things but at this stage our goal is to get up to the next stage and kind of turtle it out until we can get some sort of advantage. If we get up to age three first, we can make um, palace guards or whatnot. Uh, but if you are, if you end up being stuck in a longer age two engagement, you can consider going up to the next dynasty. And the way we do that, as I kind of highlighted just before, we build the other age up landmark in age two. Um, this will actually reduce the villager train time from 20 seconds to 12 seconds. So it'll also give us access to the Zugnu, which are really good against basically any unit that isn't armored. Um, so if you are in this extended age two, you feel stuck in age two, you, you can continue um, to make stronger units, right? You can make Zugnu, you can produce vills at a quicker rate without building another town center. You get increased tax collection from the other landmark that you can make. So that is an option if your opponent is non-stop aggroing you in age two and you just feel like you can't age up. Just make better units, have a better eco, and then go from there. You can age up later or potentially win in age two. You're just going to have to kind of get a feel for where you are in the game and make a decision based on that. So that kind of covers the general opening for this build and like how you can approach dealing with early pressure. I think getting the blacksmith upgrades reasonably early is going to be really important, especially against like an opponent like English where the plus one armor is actually really helpful against longbows. Um, and then we want to focus on going age three. And from here, you can decide based on what your opponent has, what types of units you make. If they have no cav, um, you could consider making nest of bees. If they are going uh, some like archer heavy comp, you could go palace guards and lancers. There's a lot of options. If you don't really have the resources for nest of bees and you want to like push and make put on pressure on your opponent, you can go lancer, palace guards. They're both really good options. If they have pikes, um, Palace Guard is going to be a better option for you because obviously Pikes do well against Lancers, but Palace Guards do well against Pikes and Archers. Um, considering the extra movement speed as well, they're actually really nice at getting on top of Archers, especially Longbows because they have a slightly um, lower speed uh, movement speed. So that kind of covers the opening guide. I will be covering in depth two games where... China plays against English in both of them. It was actually the recent Steel Series, I believe, quarter semi-finals or 
something along those lines. One of the finals here, one of them I'm going to be taking a look at is B versus Hera. Now, Hera was playing English, B was playing China. It was actually on this map, Lippany. Then I want to take a look at a BCQD game versus Marine Lord. Now, what I want to take a look at is what went wrong for China in B versus Hera game compared to what went right with um, BCQD taking out Marine, Marine Lords English with China. And I want to kind of give you in, some insight into some of the decision making and some of the approaches that ultimately led to them winning. So hopefully you enjoyed this guide. This should help you with the opening and the build order in kind of dealing with the H2 pressure. Hopefully the next video that I come out with, with the analysis on how they ended up playing it outside of um, just the initial, say, 10, 15 minutes kind of dictated how they won. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.